in this video focusing all about group pro productivity and group cohesion. We kind of need to start off by understanding what kind of the properties of groups are. What do we understand by the properties of groups? So I'm going to kind of do that first of all. I'm just going to do that down here. Properties, properties of groups. I suppose these things are... If, if a group is working effectively and in a streamlined sort of way, we'd expect to see these things as part of that group, okay? They, these would be like the givens, the standard things that we would expect um, to find a part of these experience of being part of a united group. The first one is something about being having a common goal, okay? And everybody understanding what that goal is and what it is people are working towards. So I've got the examples here of the Arsenal football team. I really don't want to call them Arsenal ladies, but as that's actually what they're called, I suppose I'll have to, Arsenal ladies FC, but just Arsenal, Arsenal Football Club. Um, and here we have the Lotta Bellasol um, team pursuit uh, road cycling team. I think this was in the. I'm not sure if this is in the Vuelta or in the in the Giro in Italy. But anyway, they're doing a team pursuit road race here. Um, so we're saying that if these groups want to be effective, the things we might expect to see is that they've got a common goal. So in the case of the team pursuit, where they all take turns going at the front and therefore being effectively the windbreak and everyone else being streamlined behind them, they've got the common goal of getting the whole group across the line in a certain period of time. Whereas the, perhaps the Arsenal Ladies Football Club, they have a common goal that they want to win certain trophies within a calendar season, right? These are the common goals that are uniting them and are actually taken forward towards those goals. Secondly, and I think this actually leads off what we just said, was you'd expect there to be some kind of collective identity. Collective identity. Now that identity, of course, it should allow for individuals and for people to be different, but you can see just by looking at these people, look, they're wearing the same, they're dressed the same, they look quite similar, okay? There's quite literally a collective identity, identity about them. And part of that is sort of feeling ownership and membership of a particular group, right? And that helps as well. Um, other properties we, we might expect to see from any sort of successful group is that the communication between the group members is excellent. So we'd expect there to be excellent communication. Now that could be like on a technical level, you know, we've got that here, right? Like I'm coming past, slow down, speed up. Uh, you go in the front, whatever, whatever. I mean, I'm not a brilliant cyclist, so I can't be precise exactly what gets discussed. But that could be on a technical level, as we've got here. But it could be also on like a um, social level, right? That people just like being together. There's a kind of a mutual interactivity and attraction between people. I mentioned this term already, and it's the idea of group unity. And we'd expect any successful group to have some notion of group unity, some notion of togetherness, some notion of we are one and the same and we're all working in the same direction so that unity is quite an important point and finally I would suggest is that there's some kind of shared purpose some kind of shared purpose and I think the idea of shared purpose it's sort of the idea that you know everyone's got one another's backs that we work for each other that we that we do it for one another we back 